Hey guys, I'm Elliot. This is Everything Elliot. Today we're gonna to be working on my Kubota L4701. Now my tractor's got just shy of 500 hours on it. Um, I bought it used. I bought it with, I think it had like 150, 200 hours on it. The previous owner didn't have a maintenance schedule. Therefore, I don't know what has been changed on this. Uh, when I originally bought the tractor, I did a oil change, oil filter, hydraulic, hydrostatic filter, uh, fuel filter, and I think that's it. But now that I've put about 300 hours on the machine myself, I figure it's time to do a change of all the fluids. So I've got brand new transmission fluid, which is gonna be your hydraulic fluid, uh, brand new oil, uh, and all the filters. Uh, every filter that's on this machine and every liquid that's in this machine is going to be changed today. Now, if you only need a specific part of this video, like let's say you only need to do your oil or you only need to do your hydraulic oil, I'll put chapters down below so you guys can fast forward to those parts. The first thing we're gonna start with is going to be the motor oil. Now, um, it's pretty simple. If you've done an oil change on basically anything, it's gonna be the same as this. Take the uh, drain bolts out, drain the oil, put a new filter in, and uh, put some new oil in it. So, let's get to work. All right, so like I was saying, we're gonna be starting off with the oil. And your oil drain bolt is a 19 millimeter. So we'll slide under here. And uh, if you've got an L4701 like mine, it's got what's called a, uh, what I like to call a saddle pan. So the drive shaft actually runs up the center here, and then you've got two drain bolts here. You have to make sure you get them both. If you only do one, you're not gonna be draining the oil all the way. Now don't forget, you're gonna be getting about two and a half gallons of oil out of this. So make sure that your uh, your catch pan is big enough. And try not to drop that bolt in the catch pan. There we go. All right, that's one. And I believe my bucket is gonna be big enough. Move this over here. See if we can do both at the same time. Oh no, did you guys see that fall off of there? That was my washer. That is not great. Let's see if we can get this washer to come off with the bolt. So we're gonna have to fish that washer out of the, uh, out of the bucket here. Make sure we're gonna catch this. Okay, there's number two. So we'll let that drain for a little bit. So what happened, it's got this copper washer on here and uh, the first one I took off, the copper washer stayed on the bottom of the oil pan. I said to myself, that eh, will probably stay on there. You can see there's no washer on this one. Yeah, well, it fell off. So we're gonna have to dig that out of the, uh, the bucket. Oh, lost my hat. Another pro tip to make this drain faster is make sure you pull your uh, either pull your dipstick out or your fill cap. Loosen that up. That'll let air in. It'll drain faster. All right. So now that it's been draining for like 10 minutes or so, we can put one of the bolts back in. Can't put the second bolt back in because uh, again, drop the washer. So the one with the washer on it, we will reinstall that. All right, so since I don't have a second bolt, I brought a second oil pan, oil drain pan down here, and we're gonna try to get the washer out of this bucket. Hopefully we do, because I don't wanna drive back to the dealership. 
So this is my waste oil heater uh, made by Lanair. That's what heats my shop in the wintertime and it accepts all used motor oil, hydraulic fluid, transmission fluid, stuff like that. Which makes it very convenient for me to get rid of my used oil. Now, what are we going to do here? Um, I assume the washer went to the bottom, so I don't think I'm going to have an issue with pouring out the top, you know, three quarters of the oil. Because it is copper, so I'm sure it won't float. it in the bottom there. I just tried moving the bucket around but it's still going with the bottom of the oil. So we'll dump some more oil out. Aha! Okay. It's in there. Just gotta get it. There we go. Washer has been recovered. Now we can just dump the rest in here. Now we can go put that other bolt back on now that we have the washer back. All right, with the washer recovered, we can put this one back in. Now, when you're tightening these down, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a torque spec. I'm sure of it. But, I don't use torque wrenches. Just, uh, Nice and snug. That's all you need, right there. It's got a copper crush washer on it for a reason. So the next thing we need to do is change the oil filter. And I believe that is on this side of the motor, which would be the passenger side of the motor. So like I was saying, the oil filter is on the, what would be passenger side of the tractor. You can see it's right there, right where I got the light pointed and the, the other camera, but yeah, right there. Just got to loosen it off. It is going to make a mess, so make sure you have your drain pan below it. Now there are a bunch of different types of uh, filter wrenches you can use. I kind of prefer this uh, vice grip style. It just seems to work the best for me. Um, you just pinch it on there and go to town with it. Sometimes those other ones that tighten as you turn, they, they loosen up on themselves. So that's why I prefer this vice grip. You just lock it on there and then grab it. Okay. So you can see the last time I changed this was March of 2020 at 300 hours. So yeah, it was, it's due for a change, that's for sure. Like I said, I told you it's gonna make a mess. So just make sure you have your pan below. So with this Kubota L4701, the oil filter that's going to go into it is a HH164-32430. We have a little bit of dirt around here, so we're just going to grab a napkin and we'll clean that dirt off. What a nice clean mating surface for that gasket so you don't leak any oil. So these do come sealed from the factory. Uh, make sure you take this plastic off before you try to put your filter on. If you uh, install it like this, you're going to have a bad time. I mean, I know it sounds simple, but man, you'd be surprised. So normally on a filter like this, uh, you would fill it up with oil, but since this is a horizontal filter, if you fill it up with oil, it's just going just gonna to come spilling out. Now before you install this, do yourself a favor. When you're down in there, grab some of that old motor oil and just rub it on this ring that's right here. Just to give it a, you know, a nice sealing surface. So grab some of that oil and just rub it right on this ring right here. 
you're going to kind of have to fight these hoses just a hair to get it started. But once you do, it'll go right on. Now these filters just need to be hand tight. So don't go crazy. Don't, you don't need to put a wrench on it or anything. Just grab it with your two hands and spin it on. Once you can't get it anymore with your hands, you know it's tight enough. All right, move these hoses out of the way just to make sure you didn't pinch anything. Yep, nothing's pinched behind it. That's good. All right, filter and old oil is drained. Now it's time for us to add new oil. I believe this machine calls for about nine quarts. I think exactly it's like 8.7 or something like that. And you're gonna find your oil fill pretty much at, uh, let's say 10 o'clock to that oil filter, maybe 10.30. So right here in this little gap, that's gonna be where your oil fill is gonna be. You'll see your cap in there. It's gonna be super hard to get off. I remember this from last time. I'm gonna grab a little pair of pliers or something. There we go. Why is the compressor on? We don't need the compressor on. Yeah, we'll turn that off. We're not doing anything with air tools. All right, where were we? Loosen the cap. We'll get it out of there. There's your oil cap. Safekeeping. All right, I'm gonna grab a, uh, a funnel. We'll get ready to fill it. Look at that, perfect fit. Sits right on the loader arm. Um, 8.7 quarts. That's how many we need to put in. So this is the oil I'm putting in. It's Kubota 1540. You can run 1540, you can run 1030. All depends on your climate. All right, so 8.7 quarts and uh, We'll be back with you guys in a minute. Okay. So since I don't have a, a gauge on this bottle, I don't know how much I've dumped in there so far to be exact. What we'll do is we'll go to the other side of the machine and we'll pull the dipstick. See if we're, uh, see if we're even on the dipstick yet. So your dipstick is right here. Now it's kind of tough to see, but we'll put it in there because I had it out for vent and uh, we'll pull it out. So it looks like we're about halfway up the dipstick. Um, but don't forget the uh, oil filter isn't filled yet. And I'd like it more towards that uh, top side of that dipstick. So we'll go add some more. All right, I've added a couple another glugs. We'll see where we're at. Wipe it off. All right, we're about three quarters of the way up. You can see the line right here. We can, uh, we'll put the oil cap back on and we'll fire the machine up and uh, let it run for like 15, 20 seconds, let the oil circulate. And then we'll check the oil again. Let's uh, check the oil again. So we're about, uh, about halfway. I'm gonna add a couple more glugs. You see how much it went down. It used to be up here. And then after we ran it, it's gone down to about here. So I'll add a couple more glugs in there and uh, we should be ready to rock and roll. So I added about probably a half quart and we are at just about the three quarter line, which is perfect in my book. That's the motor oil. So the next thing we can accomplish is the hydrostatic fluid, which is also your fluid for all your pistons and stuff. It's just one big system. It takes about uh, 11 gallons, so make sure you have some five gallon buckets handy to do the uh, change. All right, uh, my tractor particularly has three drain plugs. 
I believe one is an Allen and the other two or the other three are sockets or hex head bolts. So the first one we're going to try to get out is the Allen. I'm pretty sure it's a drain bolt. I've been wrong before and uh, I guess we'll find out. So this right here is an Allen head and uh, we're going to see if there's some oil that comes out of it. Holy shnikes. All right, that is tight. Uh, more force, a breaker bar. All right, let's apply some more force to it. Let's see what happens here. Holy cow. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing this one first is it drains straight down. Uh, so I'm hoping it doesn't make as much of a mess. vacuum making that noise. We'll go pop the rear plug, the rear fill. So by popping the rear fill, I know that it's the right, uh, it's the right drain plug. Because once I pop that hydraulic fill port, it stopped making that vacuum sucking noise. Now, make sure you got a second bucket ready. Because, uh, again, it's like 11 gallons or something. Right here. Oh no, I knocked my other camera over. There's one bucket. Okay, well, we'll let that drain all the way out and we'll go dump this oil in the heater. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue to let this one drain. I've got my small oil pan right here and uh, I'll let this just catch the dribbles. So the first one's still dribbling out and we're gonna move on to the second one, which is just behind the first one a little bit, and I believe it is a 22 mil. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned, but the first one was a 3 8 Allen, which is weird because it should be metric, but I put nine mil in there. It was way loose, couldn't fit 10 in. Um, I assume it's probably supposed to be 10, but the paint and stuff took up some space. So, 22 mil. We'll uh, get to the second one right here. Wait a minute. Let's go to off. Okay. Need the long boy again. Get our bucket ready. Probably can't see anything, but trust me, I am unscrewing it. We're going to try not to drop it into the bucket. The washer's off of it. I'm not expecting a ton to come out here. I mean, there's going to be a lot, but not a ton. Because most of it should have came out on the first one. 
Oh, we're close. There we go. Okay. It's got a pretty heavy flow. All right, well, the, uh, the Allen head one now, since I've opened this rear one, the Allen head has stopped leaking out. So we'll go ahead and reinstall that drain plug. Now this Allen plug, it does have a O-ring on it. I know you can't see it, but there's no ring on there, trust me. Just double check that, make sure it's still in good condition. Again, there's probably a torque spec, but I don't know what. If you can't tighten it anymore with a 3 8 ratchet. Ooh, is my belly out? Excuse me, I should, should censor that. Uh, if you can't tighten it anymore with a 3 8 ratchet, you know it's tight enough. You're not going to break anything with a 3 8 ratchet, trust me. All right, we can put our Allen away, we can put our 3 8 away. <gasps> That's a lie, we can't put our 3 8 away. We need our 3 8 because the last two drain bolts, drain plugs, are 14 millimeter. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull this, uh, it's not a five gallon, it's probably a four gallon. Pull that out of here, let that drip, and I'll put my small one underneath it. Yeah, we only got like, uh, I don't know, maybe a gallon and a half out of that one. So I'll go dump it, and then we'll do the last two drain bolts. So yeah, we'll let that drip dry, and let's move to the rear of the tractor. So, I won't lie to you, this would be a lot easier if I didn't have an attachment on here, but I do. So, and I can't move the tractor now. Uh, there's two more drain bolts. They are on this, the axle housing right here. They're on the bottom most portion of the axle housing right here. I think I'm pointing at it. The other camera, the other camera will tell you. But we'll take a look under there and uh, what I'm hoping is going to happen since I drained the two main ones out first, when I open this axle housing, it won't come splashing out and make a mess. Hopefully it just drains out. If you do the axle housing ones first, there's going to be a lot of pressure behind it and uh, you might make a mess. So let's find out. Elliot and you even said that was gonna happen all right so round two we dropped the washer in the bucket but this one might be a lot easier to find I don't know I mean that stuff is crystal clear I mean, it looks like it was just changed it wasn't it wasn't just changed because it didn't but I guess that's a good thing all right, so we'll let that uh, we'll let that drain out for a while. So since that one's draining now, the 22 mil bolt, the second one that I did, that has stopped draining. So what I'm going to do is tighten that 22 mil back up, and then we'll do the same thing. I'll pull the short one over here. We'll switch the bucket to the other side. Wrong way. Didn't lose the uh, didn't lose the bolt on that one. All right, we'll let that drain for a minute. All right. All right so now that it's drained out, go ahead and put the plug back in. All right, now that we have the, uh, all the oil out, 
Now we can do the filters. So there are two hydraulic filters on this machine, on the L-series machines, I should say. One on the driver's side, one on what would be the passenger side. One of them is for the transmission fluid, that's running the transmission, and the other filter is for the hydraulic functions of the machine, like your loader, your three-point. Don't ask me which one's which, because I have no idea. First one's here, underneath your step, on what would be the driver's side. Again, using a pair of oil filter wrench, oil filter wrenches. Get her on there. I'll just start spinning it off. These are only hand tight, so it really, uh, really shouldn't be that hard to get off. Okay. There's one of them. This is a uh, HHTA059900, maybe. We'll just match it up with the one, uh, the replacement that I have. So again, HHTA059900. This is the hydrostatic filter. So this must be for the transmission portion of it. Again, don't forget to take your plastic off. It's a very important step. Fingers officially clean. Get some of that oil. Put some of that oil on that O-ring. All right. Slap her in there. Again, hand tight. Your hands are gonna be a little greasy if you're like me and have done this whole thing at one shot. So I'm gonna go clean my hands off. That way I can get a good grip on this uh, and tighten it down. We'll go move to the other side. Do the same thing on the other side. So passenger side, same thing. Oh, this one's a little tighter. Get a good clamp on this. There we go. All right. So these Kubotas, uh, it's not a great design because you can see this is all dented in here. Also, what's important about this is you've got this ring on top of here. This is a magnetic ring. This needs to come out. That grabs all the uh, filings and stuff. So we'll take that out. You need to clean it off, insert it into your new filter, and then put the new filter on. So you can see this new filter didn't come with the magnet. This is all cleaned off now. So we'll uh, take the plastic off, put the magnet in there like so, and reinstall. Put your magnet in, like so. And uh, don't forget to grab some of that oil, put that oil on this seal. All right, reinstalling. Again, just hand tight. So now we've got both the hydraulic filters done, drained all the hydraulic fluid, now we need to add some in. Um, I want to say it's around 11 gallons or so. I'll look it up now to tell you guys, and we'll move to the back of the tractor to fill the hydraulic system up. So it's 10.6 gallons, and at the rear of your tractor, there's a, uh, a plug like this, fill cap. Take that out, insert your selected funnel, and uh, dump away, I guess. So 10.6 gallons, I'm gonna fill this up, and uh, when we're done with that, I'll show you guys how to check the level. All right, so 10.6 gallons added into the rear there, and then uh, to check it, you gotta come under the seat here. It's kinda tough to see, 
Well, right here, there's a dipstick. And we're on. We're like dead nuts on the money. Um, the tractor hasn't been ran yet. So the filters do need to still fill up and we can add as necessary, but it's right at the top line. So I'm leaving it. Once I run the tractor for the first time, I'll double check it and add as needed. So we'll uh, put that cap back on, get rid of the funnel, and we'll do the air filter quick. The air filter is uh, super simple, right there. So I'm gonna go clean up and we'll do the air filter. So the air filter is super simple. You've got these clips that need to come off, pull the housing off, or cover I should say. Pull the old one out. Don't forget the inner filter. Those are trash. And we've got the new one here. Again, plastic. Don't forget to take it off. Take the new inner filter. Fit that in there. Make sure it's seated all the way. Plastic comes off the outer filter. And again, get seated all the way. Important part here, this is a drain. If any moisture or anything gets in here, this lets it out. So you want this to be down. That's the air filter, simple as that. So the last thing that we have to do is the fuel filter. The fuel filter is on what would be the passenger side and we have to take the trim piece off, I guess. I don't know what it's called, probably a trim piece. So we'll go over there and give that a look. So the fuel filter is right here. So we have to take this trim piece off to get to that filter. Uh, I think it's just one bolt right over there. Oh, first guess. 12 mil. I think this just comes out now. Yep. So this is your fuel filter. Um, you could use the same wrench that you've been using on all the oil filters to get it off. It is going to be full of fuel. You're probably going to make a mess. So I would recommend putting a uh, drain pan underneath. So I got my filter wrench, which was adjusted for the hydraulic filter, so we need to turn that down a little bit. Let's see if we can get this thing off. Okay. Fuel filter is out. Grab your new fuel filter, again, plastic. Don't forget to take that off. And uh, it's gonna be, I know it says oil filter, but I'm sure it'll work. 1J8004370. I'm gonna grab the old one and just, that's, that's weird that it says oil filter, but we'll grab the old one and see if it's the same thing. Same size. And it looks like the O-rings match up because you can see the fuel mark on the O-rings. So I'm sure it'll work. So we'll grab some of that old fuel, put that on here to moisten it up, and we're going to go ahead and install it. All right, I'm going to go clean my hands off, uh, and we'll clean that off, and again, hand tight. All right, that is on there. Now we have the fuel screen we need to do, which is right here. Now, this is your water separator. You'll see if you have water in your fuel, you'll see it in here. And you can kind of see, I have a little bit of water in my fuel. You can see that separation there on the bottom. I mean, at least I hope you can see it. Right there, there's a line. So what we need to do to get this off is we'll turn the fuel off right there. 
and then we'll grab a, a wrench and undo this, pull this out of here. Oh, train pan. So don't be like me when I first did this the first time. Um, there is a floater in here that tells you how much water's in here. And uh, silly me, dumped the whole thing out and that little floater went right into the oil tank. Let's pull this down. There's your screen. That is what we're gonna be replacing. We'll just dump this out and uh, there is some schmutz in the bottom of it so I'll get some brake clean and clean this thing out. See the stuff that's in the bottom of there? It's uh, pretty gross. Take this out. There we go. This can be tossed away. All right, so we'll grab our new fuel screen, put it up in there. There is a little, oh, you're not gonna stay. All right, so here's the issue. Uh, they're a different size, which is not great. I don't know if you could tell on camera or not, but looks like I'm gonna have to clean this one out and uh, reuse this. This one's not gonna work for me. I guess that's what you get for saving a couple bucks on Friday parts. All right, cleaned it out with some brake clean. Yeah, see, that's how it's supposed to fit in there. Nice and tight. Well, I guess that was a fail, huh? Okay. We can turn the fuel back on and uh, should gravity feed. Well, I'll be honest with you, my camera battery died. I don't know how much you saw, how much you didn't see, but uh, we got the filter screen replaced. The one that came from Friday Parts didn't work. So I cleaned the old one out, reinstalled it, turned the fuel back on, and we primed the fuel system just by turning the key on, leaving it for about 15, 20 seconds, turn the key off, leave it set, turn the key on. We do it three times. That should prime the system. I believe this motor is self-priming. Um, at least I think it was when I did it last time. So we'll try to fire it up and uh, see what happens. Lucky number three, hopefully. I mean, the fuel pump's clearly working. I can hear it clicking. Lucky number three, here we go. Would you believe it? Lucky number three didn't do it. That's all right, I'm not worried about it. Um, if you run into this situation, just uh, keep pumping away now. Had I thought ahead, I, I told myself this was a self-priming system, but I probably should have filled the fuel filter with fuel first. Um, I didn't do that, and now I'm probably going to pay for it, but I have confidence that it will start.
purrs like a kitten. There, we're done. Now I'll be honest with you, there is a fluid that I didn't change in this machine, and that is the front axle fluid. Mainly because I forgot. When I drove out to the dealership this morning to get fluids, I said to myself, eh, transmission, what more do I need? I totally forgot about the front axle. And I do have about a half gallon left over. However, I believe the axle holds about six quarts each side. Um, so I don't have enough. So in a coming video, I'll show you guys how to do that one. Just kidding. I ran to the dealership, got some more Super UDT. We're gonna do the front axle oil right in this video, right here, right now. So, uh, in my specific tractor, the L4701, it requires, I believe, uh, almost seven quarts of Super UDT2, same thing you put in the transmission. If you have the smaller L series, I believe they take a different size uh, or different quantity of oil, but they all run the Super UDT2. The dealership said you could run gear oil in the front, but uh, since Kubota calls for Super UDT2, and it's about the same price to be honest with you. Um, I'm just gonna run the Super UDT. Couple things you'll need, uh, the drain pan again. You'll need that, we're gonna be draining the old oil. You're gonna need some wrenches. Uh, I don't know what size yet, but we'll figure that out together. And you need to get to the inside of the tire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire up the machine and uh, we'll turn the tire all the way to, I don't know, the left. We'll start on this side first. So we need to move down into the axle area. The first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna go over to the fill plug and we'll take the fill plug out. That way the case can vent and the oil will come out faster. So the fill plug on this tractor is going to be on what is the driver's side of the tractor. It's gonna be right on the top of the axle over here. It's this one right here. Uh, on my tractor, it is inch and a 16th, which is about equivalent to 27 millimeters. We'll pull that off. Nice and easy. Again, we're just doing this first so the uh, axle can breathe and the oil will uh, drain out a little faster. There we go, she's out. So we are just gonna leave this, uh, you know what? Let's put it somewhere we're not gonna lose it. What on top of this chair? All right, it's on top of the chair. And then we're gonna go back over to the, uh, the other side because that's the way that I got the wheel turned. We'll start draining that side first. So once you're over here on this side, we've got the bolt that is on the axle housing. This is gonna be the drain plug right here. This is a 14 mil. And the way I've got this kind of rigged up is we've got a funnel here below it, and then that's going into a drain pan. I mean, if you take the wheel off, you can get a drain pan right underneath it, but I don't want to monkey with that, so we're going to do it with the wheel on. Oh, and we missed. Nothing like spilling a little bit of gear oil on the ground, huh? Alright, so I guess prepare yourself for that. We'll let this drain for a while and then uh, We'll go do the other side, drain the other side as well. We're about like, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes and it's, it's still going. Certainly not as strong as it was, but you can see on the camera there that there is still a flow. At least I hope you can see that. Guess I'll go get a beer and uh, wait for this to finish. So when I come back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these tires we're gonna rotate them the other way and do the same exact thing on the opposite side. So we're over here on the, uh, what would be driver's side. Uh, we're gonna do the same exact thing. This time I'm gonna be a little more attentive with the funnel when it first comes out. There's not gonna be as much that comes out on this side because obviously we already drained half of it. But there will still be some that comes out. I'm hoping there's not a big gush like there was last time. But we'll be ready this time, I hope. I say that and I'm probably gonna spill gear oil all over the place again. But we'll see, here we go. Yep, 
and we did it again. So the last side took about uh, 20 minutes to drain, to be honest with you. It was, uh, it was something. So we're gonna let this drain too. Probably take another 20 minutes, hopefully not, but we'll let it drain. And then uh, when we come back, we're gonna fill it up. I'll show you guys the proper way to fill it up. And even if you don't have this machine that exactly takes the 6.9 quarts, you don't really need to know because there's a, there's a level indicator. I'll show you where that is. All right, so now that this side is uh, done draining, it went much faster than the last side. Obviously, there's not as much oil in it. We're gonna put this uh, drain plug back in, tighten that down, and then what we'll do is we're gonna open up the fill port. Well, the fill port's already open. What we're gonna open up is the, uh, the I guess you'd call it maybe like the overflow port. Oh. Slipped off. Okay. And that is right behind the fill port. It's right here. So you've got your fill port right here and your overflow or level port. It's gonna be right there. I'm hoping that it's 14 just like the rest of them. And it is. Get that loosened. Take that off. Get that piece of grass out of there. All right. Set that aside. So now what we need to do is I'm going to grab a funnel and we'll put a funnel in here and basically fill it until it starts coming out of here. Put that bolt back in and voila, we're done. So since there is going to be some oil spilling out of it, I'm going to put this drain pan underneath it. I'm going to grab a funnel, not this bent one, and we'll fill it up. So I've got this nice long funnel that should fit right in there and it should make it somewhat easy pour the oil in. Now I'm gonna have to pour it up here above the uh, above the loader arm, but I guess if you didn't have your loader on, it'd be a little easier. Let's see who texted me. Oh, dinner's done. No rush to come in. It's gotta cool down anyway and stay super hot for a while. It's pot pie. I love pot pie. Michelle made pot pie. Anywho, she said it's gotta cool down for a little bit, so we'll pour some oil in. Again, it takes like 6.9 or something like that, so I know it's got to take more than this. All right, there's that. We'll go get the big one that I just bought today. Get this big jug open. Now this might prove to be a little more difficult to pour. We'll find out, won't we? Oh, it fits in between. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know that wasn't six quarts yet, but it is flowing out of the thing. I think it's because I was pouring it too fast not giving it a chance to uh, go to both sides. Let's pour a little more in and see what happens. Yeah, so I think that's exactly what was happening. I was pouring too fast, and instead of separating side to side, it was just coming right out the uh, fill port, or the uh, level port, I guess you could say. Maybe not, are we there already? Doesn't seem like nearly enough. I mean, maybe this full. I don't know. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it took 6.9 quarts. That a 6.9 quarts is like a gallon and a half plus like a quart, maybe. I can hear something bubbling in there, so maybe it's working its way down the other side of the axle. Um, I'll leave it for a while. I'll go eat dinner, and then uh, once I come back from dinner, we'll finish filling it up. See what's really going on. All right, so a belly full of chicken pot pie really, really would change your outlook on life, man. I know they say chicken noodle soup is uh, good for the soul, but man, whoever wrote that never had pot pie. Anywho, uh, we're going to throw some more oil on this and see if it comes out of that uh, port down there and 
Hopefully Kubota didn't lie about how much it takes. Yeah, it's coming right out. It's a lot less than I thought it was going to take. Well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll put this drain plug back in here, this fill plug, whatever kind of plug you want to call it. Tighten that back up. And what I'll do is, uh, after I run it the first time, I gotta check the fluids anyway. I gotta run it and check the transmission fluid, make sure that's all up to snuff, and I gotta run it and check this fluid. So, first time I run it, I'll do this all over again just to confirm that it's at the right height. But that's how you change the, uh, the axle fluid in the L Series tractor. Now, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, make sure you leave a comment below. If you've made it this far, hit that subscribe button for me. It would really help me out. I'd appreciate it. If you like this video, I do have some other maintenance videos that you might like as well. Who knows? Maybe I've worked on something that you own. And if not, check them out anyway, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I know you see that. Don't, don't judge me on that. Anywho, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Until the next video, have a great day.